as you know, gravitas is a very hot subject and something that most people come across at some stage in their career as a barrier to their progression to higher levels. They get told in an appraisal, you need more gravitas if you want to step up to the next run, to the executive or to the C-suite. Um, and then when they ask, well, what does that mean? They get a few mumbles back and no great clarity. So it's a delight today to sp focus a little bit more on gravitas and what it is. And I've got with me today, Caroline Goida. Uh, Caroline wrote the book called Gravitas and has also produced an audio series called The Gravitas Method and we'll give you some links to that later on. So delighted to you know, welcome Caroline. So perhaps you could, Caroline, just introduce yourself quickly and then start on, well, what is Gravitas? So we can start to get our heads around it. Hi Colin, it's great to be here. And, and my background is really theatre. So I, I started out training as an actor and then teaching actors for 10 years. And I ended up starting to teach voice with non-actors so the theatre of life and at, at one stage I'd been teaching presence at BT and someone at BT said we'd really like you to run a gravitas course for our mid-level talent because they keep getting told like you just said they need gravitas but we don't quite know what it means and so I said yeah I'll run that course and then I went home and thought I think I know what gravitas is but I, I kind of want to check it out so I went off to the London Library, which is a fantastic place, and put a pile of kind of Latin and Greek textbooks, translation I hasten to add, and went and, and kind of discovered what the ancient world had said about it. And you find out that gravitas was a Roman virtue, and it was something that was seen as a key part of being a, you know, a Roman citizen, a Roman man. But when you go back to the Greeks, the thing that really interested me was that they trained their actors, their orators rather, and their athletes on the same field. So I think that, that really got me thinking because it, it took me straight back to my acting training where you do it physically, you know, it's not, it's not intellectual, it's a physical thing. And I realized that a lot of what we were saying about in terms of gravitas was, of course, it's your knowledge, it's what you, it's your expertise. There's also something about your passion and your energy. And then there's something about your purpose. And I knew that that was as much physical as intellectual because I'd been told at drama school I was in my head. And so I come at it from a different angle perhaps to some people in that I think it, it's as much about how we embody ourselves as it is how we think. And arguably we all think of it too much these days. And sometimes just being physically present to others is the thing that makes the difference. So there's a, there's a little bit there about, or a lot about, what's going on inside rather than what suit you're wearing, how you're, how you're appearing physically to people. So, I mean, you mentioned the word purpose there. What do you see as being purpose? What do you mean by that? So uh, in the end, I cooked gravitas down to four words I, I heavily drawing on aristotle i should say and they were knowledge and passion plus purpose minus anxiety and and i called that the gravitas equation knowledge plus passion plus purpose minus anxiety now purpose to me is the really key bit because we can know something very well we can be passionate about it but unless we have a common purpose it's only ever going to be charisma and the thing that marks out the greats, and I, you know, I, in my next life that could happen, but it's something that we can all aspire to, is that they have this really compelling common purpose for something greater than themselves. And that's when it really lifts off. But I think we can all have a purpose bigger than us. You know, in an Instagram age, I actually think it's really important because it's such a, it's a culture that can encourage you just to go inwards and that doesn't really help anybody in the end. Mm -hmm. so, it's a, so it's about, you know, having something to present to the world, but having it inside first, that you're not just there to do your job, to deliver to expectations. It's that plus some. And it's, it's about meaning. Someone said recently that a, a key job for corporates should be chief meaning officer, which really made me think. And, and it's the leaders who have a clear purpose and can make meaning out of what a business is doing that they create something different. They create something tangibly different. And when they go, people really notice because we all need meaning. We need to believe that what we're doing is, is important. So in a way, this is about standing out above the crowd. So distinguishing yourself in some way so that you're not like the masses. Yes. And, and I would 
add to that that we often think about standing out from the crowd as being a kind of competitive thing. And I think when you look at people who are great leaders in businesses or people who've been great leaders of cultures, you know, Martin Luther King or Obama, whoever, they, they're, they're working with people rather than competing with them. And I think that's so important. There's, there's a sense of a team, a tribe, a, a, an army behind you rather than running a race. And we, we live in such a competitive culture that I think it's really important to be aware of that and to, and to have a sense of real, true, common purpose working with people. So it's almost embodying the collective and being almost like the, the face of the collective purpose and direction that people are going in. I think that's a really lovely way of putting it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and I like the way you distinguish between the competitiveness because a lot of standing out is posturing, is, hey, look at me, aren't I good? I should be promoted and things like that. And I've often said to people, you've got to have that very deep-seated sense of sense of confidence that you can handle whatever is thrown at you. But this is also about not needing to protest, not needing to promote yourself in such a way because almost like the vibe or the, the essence of you is doing that for for you exactly and and i've come across two really good descriptions of it recently one was i was working with a political party and, and one of the the staffers said that an ex-cabinet minister was absolutely brilliant in meetings because she listens intently and then at the end of the meeting she pulls together all the threads and adds her own perspective and they said you know so many people in our meetings don't do that but she really stands out and it was so interesting because it was a lot about her listening. It wasn't about how good she sounded. And that reminded me of something a friend of mine said about sometimes you have to be, sometimes it's not about being the dots, it's about joining the dots. That's very interesting because somebody else I interviewed, David Trina, a couple of, couple of months ago, said that what he does in a board meeting is sit quietly listening to all the other loud voices and then finds an opportunity to then summarise what has been happening, bring it together and turn the meaning towards his purpose. Exactly. And that's, that's the refinement, isn't it? That it's, that, it's having that clear intent hearing all the strands and then directing it towards what you've come in to achieve. And that's really elegant. Yeah. So this, this sounds, Caroline, forgive me for saying this, this sounds very different from the old school sort of fake it till you make it. I mean, is that dead? I, I'm fascinated by fake it till you make it. Cause obviously I come from acting, which is people think all about pretending. And the interesting thing about even acting is that you are generating something truthful for yourself from within. And so when we talk about, you know, finding gravitas, my big belief is that we all have it to some degree and that there are things you can do that are maybe a shift in habit, like say sitting up straighter, perhaps projecting your voice from somewhere different, perhaps breathing in a different way, but that actually those are things that you naturally probably did as a baby. So in a way it's refinding an essence rather than you know forcing something on from outside and so do i believe you can change who you how you show up yes do i believe you can change who you are no can how you show up change how people perceive you absolutely so to learn the small shifts, the kind of marginal gains in body language that can really shift how people see you is really powerful. Yeah, because there can be a big difference between being confident and displaying confidence. And I know I remember coaching somebody once that he said he's totally master of his subject, but he's irritated and fidgeting all the time because he wants everybody else to move quicker because his mind is already to the solution plus. And he's just waiting for people to catch up. And, you know, he was struggling with that. It, and we've all worked with those people. And, and it, it, it's, it's something about the ability of someone to be present and to be grounded and centred. And in, in gravitas is also the word gravity, although gravity came along afterwards because Newton coined it, obviously, you know, a couple of thousands of years later. But... It, gravity has this idea of the, the downward force and the upward force and gravitas to me has that quality of groundedness weight 
presence and also the lightness, the openness, the ability to take on other opinions, the ability to laugh at yourself. That combination of weight and light is roots and wings, they call it in yoga, is really powerful. And that's interesting because, I mean, I love the way you're describing that as being grounded. And I think and we were talking earlier on about being grounded as an individual and finding yourself as being, if you like, the, 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 the seed or the, the, the opportunity to then allow gravitas to emerge. It's about, I mean, it's the idea of, of essence. And, and when, when there is something truthful in how we come across, we resonate differently. I was, I was hearing an MP talk about this. He was, he was talking to a group of prospective candidates and he said, Sometimes someone's going to ask you a question and you're not necessarily going to have the answer that they want. But he said, I've learned over 20 years of doing this, that if you can answer it honestly and from a sense of your own values and your own purpose, people will be OK with you having a different opinion. What they won't like is if you try and pretend or you try and say what you think they want to hear because they'll see a deception. And that that's what really gets to us. And so they see it straight away, don't they? They see it straight away. They can tell. The micro muscles in the face give it away. It's just mm -hmm. there's something about being... It's, I mean, it's a cliche, but it's to thine own self be true. It's not enough because then, of course, you have to be able to read other people and listen to other people. But there's something really powerful about starting from that place. So almost like this, this, this is the, the, the root of authenticity then. And a lot of people are talking at the moment about being authentic, higher levels of integrity. You've got to know who you are before you can actually start to really let that authenticity shine through. And, and I think that what performance taught me, and voice in particular, voice is a really cool discipline, is that that authenticity is as much about the body as it is about the head. It's about really having a self-awareness of how you're showing up, how you're breathing, how you're sitting, where your voice is placed. It's not self-consciousness, it's just a presence to your own physiology. Mm. And that people who have that, sometimes they have it through sport or you know, some martial art or they're runners, but there's something about those people when they walk into a room. You, you notice their stillness, you notice their presence. Thank <laughs> you.